Okay, I think we'll make a start and people can just continue to filter in. So good morning, everyone. My name is Kiara Singh. I'm Institute Development Associate here at the Jean Golding Institute. Um, welcome to Bristol Data Week 2023. If you can move on to the next slide, that would be great. So Bristol Data Week is an interactive programme of speakers, training and workshop. Um, it's free of charge and it's open to all. And we try and run it every year. I think this is the sixth Bristol Data Week that we're running. And it's basically to showcase the latest in data science and AI. And we offer a lot of training opportunities. And uh, it's a chance for us to connect with the community and also to gather some feedback. Uh, so if you do think of some events that you'd like to see next year that we don't have included in the programme, please do let us know. This session would be led by Nadia Chafer, Head of Data Literacy and Culture in Roche Diagnostics, and she's going to share some insights into how to develop and implement a sustainable data literacy and culture programme in healthcare. Please also do complete our short registration form. The link is in the chat box. Next slide, please, Intercer. So before we start, I'd just like to run through some housekeeping and the format of the event. So for all our in-person and online events, we follow the Gene Golding Institute Code of Conduct. It sets out guidelines for everyone taking part so we can have a welcoming and friendly, supportive virtual environment for everyone. Please do take a look. Um, thanks, Elaine, for sharing the link in the chat box. And we'll also be recording this event for those who can't attend today. Um, feel free to switch your videos on or off, although it'd be nice to see some faces towards the end of the session when we have the Q&A, especially if you'd like to ask a question. And just a reminder to keep your microphones muted if you're not presenting or asking a question for the comfort of all attendees. If you do have any questions that come to mind um, during the presentation, please feel free to enter these directly into the chat box and we will pick them up towards the end of the uh, session. And finally, please do introduce yourself in the chat box because we always like to know who's joining us and where they're coming from. Next slide, please, enter there. So for those of you who might be unfamiliar with the Gene Golding Institute or the JGI, we are a central hub for data science, artificial intelligence and data intensive research. We're one of five University of Bristol research institutes, and we aim to connect multidisciplinary experts across the university and beyond. And we also have a seed corn funding scheme, which staff and postgraduate students can apply to, to get projects off the ground. Um, looking at tackling societal challenges and to bring about positive impact and engagement with our local and international communities. You can read more about these projects on our website. On the next slide, you'll be able to see our institute is named after Jean Golding, OBE, who's a mathematician and epidemiologist. So she's mainly renowned um, as the founder of the Children of the 90s project, or the ALSPAC project, which stands for the Avon Longitudinal Study of Parents and Children. Um, ALSPAC data has actually explained sudden infant death syndrome and it's generated more than 2000 scientific publications. And we still see Jean around the campus today as she still works at the university. Next slide, please. We're partnered with the Alan Turing Institute based in London. Uh, this is the UK's National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. And um, their mission is to make great leaps in research in order to change the world for the better. And on the next slide, you can see that we also try and align with the Turing strategy, with our own JGI strategy, with our four priority work streams. Um, the first one, data-driven solutions to societal challenges. So we work in, with internal and external partners to develop data-driven solutions to tackle challenges facing society. Also, data governance and reproducibility. So we support open, accessible science and best practice and research um, within the university and beyond. Uh, data visualization and materiality. So supporting projects that explore how data is conceptualized and how people imagine, understand and experience data in different ways. 
and we also focus on data science and AI fundamental research. And we support these four work streams with cross-cutting activities, including developing communities through data. So we often bring researchers together to tackle challenges using complex data sets, um, training and development opportunities, such as our Bristol Data Week. And um, we also have an Ask JGI consultancy service where we try and support researchers at all stages of their careers that may have data orientated questions or uh, issues that we can try and, and help with. And on the next slide, you'll be able to see the wide range of activities taking place during this week. We have seminars in orange, training in blue, workshops in green, and our social activities in pink. And there's actually over 30 activities taking place this week, and we have a mix of online and in-person events. So please take a look here and feel free to sign up for the rest of the events during the week, as we have something for everyone. And we'd also like to say a big thank you on our next slide to all our generous sponsors. Um, we really couldn't put this week together without, um, you know, help and um, collaboration with our partners. And we also have many that aren't mentioned on this slide. But um, yeah, we wouldn't be able to create this full week of exciting offerings that are free and open to all without them. And I just wanted to highlight an event that is coming up this Thursday at the Bristol Beacon. Um, in the centre of town from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, Connect, Collaborate, Create with Data and AI focuses on how we can create more inclusive cultures. Um, come and join us for a really exciting panel discussion. MP Darren Jones will be there. Um, we also have a complimentary lunch to enjoy, and we have some inclusive data workshops in the afternoon, as well as some really exciting interactive exhibitions. And that will also be jointly with um, the University of the West of England. So it would be a really nice opportunity to celebrate and showcase some of the work that we're doing together. And um, finally, on the last slide, um, feel free to tweet and share your views using hashtag Bristol Data Week. Um, you can also keep in touch with us after Data Week, connect with us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our mailing list to find out about future events. If you have a data science related query, do email ask-jgi at bristol.ac.uk and we'll try and help you. Um, so yeah, that's our intro from JGI. So as mentioned earlier throughout this presentation, if you do have any questions and comments, please do put them into the chat box. Intisa, if you stop sharing, um, then hopefully Nadia will be able to share her slides. So without further ado, let me introduce Nadia Schaefer. Nadia is the global lead for data literacy and data culture in Roche Diagnostics. She holds a master's degree in business administration from the Universidad de Palermo in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and is currently working towards a master in management analytics in the Mannheim Business School. She has a passion for leading, implementing and advising on complex strategic programs with a focus on digital and data driven transformation. She has extensive experience in leading people through multinational large scale projects and change management efforts, as well as being a skilled stakeholder manager. Ecosystem thinking, driving real impact and change with focus on staying cutting edge drives Nadia's work. So over to you, Nadia. Thanks a lot, Chiara, and I'm really excited to see you all. Thanks uh, for participating, and I hope you are full of energy around data culture for the next hour or so. I have to say, I come from a background where I implemented ERP systems, IT solutions, and cloud solutions in the past, and my biggest learning was that it was never the technology, it was never the science that failed, it was always about people. So what I want to transfer to you today is really a framework. I want to bring you into reflection to consider what your role in companies in the future might be and the role data culture and data liter literacy actually plays in all of that. Before we really deep dive and understand better what data culture actually is, let's think about why we really need it. Because when I started to take on that role, two years ago, it was like, what is this fuzzy term? 
How can I measure it? What is data culture? However, in any report or a science review of Gartner, McKinsey or whatever, always the topic of literacy and culture popped up as one of the most critical things to transform your business. And today I want to share with you kind of the journey towards a digital business from a company perspective and give you some guidance and orientation around how that strategic um, framework is looking like. And you can see here, it's really a journey through different maturity levels from analog behavior towards future-oriented digital and data behaviors and smart processes. But we quickly learned, if we want to speak about data, people first need to understand where they are in that journey in digitization and digitalization. Once we have understood what digitalization actually means, we can understand in what business model we are actually working as a company and where we want to go. Understanding the role of data and that future business model, we have to talk about data availability and access and whatever role you have or will take on in the future, this is probably the most critical one to get it done in large companies. Knowing about the importance of data literacy, uh, about availability and access, we can then see what opportunities arise for decision making. If we are still on the retrospective side, or if we can go into the predictive or even prescriptive analytics part. But all of this is only possible if you have the right culture supporting the maturity you need to build your strategy or to reach your business ambition. For us, it's clearly, we want a profitable digital business at Roche. But let's start first, again, being very precise around digitization and digitalization. And you can see here, digitization is really the conversion of data from an analog to a digital form, adding in some analytics. But digitalization is leveraging a digital backbone leveraging connected digital technologies to create added value in processes and decision making. So what does it mean? We don't talk anymore about digitizing. We talk about a true new business, a new business that is based on data, analytics, and digital technologies. And this is particular bringing some disruption in. It's really requires us to think in a strategic and systematic way how we need to be as an organization or a system. And we really need to put in and embrace this digital first perspective in everything we do, which is quite difficult because usually we still tend to digitize or to even implement a tool, a system, and then say, okay, let's see what, what's the next step. And this requires a holistic perspective on everything. So important here, digitalization is a new business, a business based on data and analytics. With this quote, I will pick up on this, what this new business actually means. And this quote brings it straight to the point. The electric light did not come from the continuous improvement of the candle. And that's one big topic for companies. They think in many times that if they improve the candle, they improve the existing, they somehow will turn into bringing the electric light to life. But you can see here, it's not the same journey. It's a different business. And that's what we need to embrace. It's a different business if we want the electric light or if we continue to improve from a business model perspective, the existing. It's really up to us in the companies. And I want to share with you a more economic perspective on what that means. It means a new output, this new business model, the future business model. For us in Roche, it means new medicines and diagnostics and establishing data-based insights that evolve the practices of medicine and help our patients live longer, better lives. You can see here, from the economics perspective, the traditional business model 
if you want to say so, the, the candle is a combination of our labor and our capital. We invest to create an output, to create a product. But in the future, in the digital world, data is a new production factor in that equation. And that's where actually digital transformation comes in. We now need the right people to work and live and lead with data. And that's where the change and the disruption is felt. So understanding that data is contributing directly to the output means we need everyone in the organization to understand the role data and analytics are playing to produce an output. And you may think and ask yourself the question, what you learn from different companies and where do you think these companies are in understanding the role data plays? This is to show you how layer one digitalization and the business model are playing together. You can see in the past data on the watches did not create value, added value to the output like the traditional watch and also with the, the watch that has some more functionalities, but it's not that data is really contributing to the output. But if you compare the smartwatches, data is kind of the reason why we select or decide for a smartwatch. It's the data, it's the analytics it provides in my daily life. And that's where data creates a direct impact on the output that is created. What is our ROSH strategy? And you can just see here, and that's what we consciously want to define, that data-based insights is part of our future products. That means data is part of the output we want to produce, even more than it was in the past. In the diagnostics in particular, this is a very important point because we still are selling our large corpus instruments, which are machines in the end diagnosing disease, making tests. But if we want to say it's about data-based insights, we need to think how we come to these data-based insights. Knowing now, let's move on to the next layer. If we want to enrich and understand that data is a factor of production, we need to understand if data is available, and you can see here, that's the obvious journey we are all in. You know, the data was limited available in the past. It exponentially grow and actually there is massive amount of data available currently. For us, the ambition is that the real world setting is really through digital biomarkers becoming the lab of the future. So it's really, it's all about the real world, collecting the data from the real world over a long period and time. And we know somehow it is available. It may not be available, however, in the right format or being accessible. And that's for us why availability is just not enough. It's really about understanding how we can get access through the, to the data that is available and to make this access available for reuse and to reuse that data. And you can see here some criteria from the past to a future oriented organization, what that means. How can data be accessible for the future? And you can see these behaviors in the end. We can define, we can observe them in companies at what stage they are. Are we still on level, level two, where we have some increased skills in using the data or where data was unified and available in kind of data lakes or really siloed um, data, data warehouses or whatever you can, you name it. Or are we already talking about access to data through federated and empowered power data governance, which guides our handling in the end? Or if we have, practices for data sharing in these companies and beyond available. And if we have the right digital backbone and the data architectures that help us, that data can be shared. 
For a future-oriented organization, you should be able to observe not only within one company that data sharing is a good practice, but it should be a good practice respecting legal and foremost in the future also ethical questions next to our privacy questions to share data across the air ecosystem in a very trusted manner. Only then, and that's probably the hardest layer you just saw for most of the companies, we can go in our decision making far beyond our opinion. And that's in the end, the culture we want to have. We want to have a culture that enables us all in the company to go far beyond opinion. And in healthcare in particular, it's very, very important that we can go far beyond our even clinical opinion and use the power of data to make much better decisions in the future. And here, probably, I don't even have to say anything on that. I expect most of you are kind of in the data or mathematical space. That's our journey. However, for everyone in the organization, if I talk to other people, it's not so clear to understand the journey from descriptive analytics towards prescriptive analytics. Most of the time, people want to jump directly to AI and machine learning models without understanding if they have this longitudinal data at scale available to build robust machine learning models, or if they are limiting themselves because data is just not shared across the organization in order to use the full potential of artificial intelligence. But clearly, in healthcare, we want to be on the predictive analytics side. So that's our journey we created for the whole company to understand the role of data. And if I think about data literacy and a data culture, it's not only about the layer of decision making and applying AI. It requires everyone in the company to understand the business model we are in and have a basic knowledge on that. It requires us to understand the digital backbone we can use. And it, understand, it means that everyone needs to understand the situation of accessibility of data across the organization and beyond. So now what is data culture? And I want to share with you the definition Tableau has in place. It's the collective behaviors and beliefs of people who value practice and encourage the use of data to improve decision making. And you saw the journey we have to go through different layers to explain in the whole company so we can talk about the role of data. So it's, it's not that without an understanding on digitalization, we can talk about data. It will not come to a strong impact. And before I go on in that sense, I would like to first share with you a video which introduces our understanding on data culture within Roche. At Roche, we believe in the power of data to improve the lives of patients worldwide. We believe in the value of data to enable better healthcare decisions. We believe that actionable data empowers us all to achieve more. The key to making these beliefs a reality is a data culture we all live and breathe. A culture establishing shared values and behaviors on data and analytics. A culture fostering collective actions to scale data across our organization culture, creating value from insights through innovative data products. So let's start building a powerful data culture and make a difference together for Roche, for our customers, and for the future of patient care. Join the journey today.
go. That's the journey we are in. And that's the journey we, are talk we started talking about. Now that we know we have this framework, how can we scale? And you show that data culture, it's not about our individual beliefs, behaviors, or values. It's only, we can only call it culture when it is expressed across a whole organization, a group. And while you may ask the question many times how you can scale data access, I do ask the same question, but on behavior. How can we scale behaviors across the whole organization with the respect to data and analytics and to enable and to empower people to lead and work in the digital and data world? So it's really important to understand that culture is the term where the group makes the difference. An individual can be data literate. And we have so many really smart people also in our organization with great projects they are driving or proof of value through data. But it's still such a big step from the proof of value to make this algorithm or these analytics a business. There is this huge gap between how do I make this a business? How do I scale this? in the whole group so it is understood and that it really brings money. And there are quite some challenges around data where we need to think about and teach people across all these layers. And in an ideal world, we would like our whole company to scale that from the left to the right in a more um, parallel way. So they really increase their maturity. They have a good level of digitalization, a good level of business model understanding with data. Um, how does it work? How is a digital business actually looking like? Um, how do, for example, um, data is a data business working? What is the role of data exchange models and so on? It's just unknown still. We are so used to our traditional business models to create product, physical products, that we need to understand the changes and challenges that come up. And the truth is we did some assessment across our organization where, we, where people really rated themselves where they are. And the reality looks a little bit more like that, that we are quite advanced making good progress in digitalization, but we are still working and acting in this old business model. So imagine here, so is this contradicting? Is this enabling us? Is then also the question I ask? Because if I have a mindset or I'm still acting in the mindset of a candle, I will probably build the whole infrastructure and digital backbone for the candle. And it's not bringing us to the electric light. So there might be even conflicting maturity levels where we try to understand now with this model better where we are as an organization and where we can start working um, to increase our maturity. So this whole system comes up to speed again. So it requires us from the culture and literacy team also understand that it's not about increasing the maturity only layer by layer. We need to consider that as a whole system. And in that system, we try to increase, find the right Let's, let me call that acupuncture points in the end to start and make the system flow again. And so we can speed up in increasing our maturity across all layers. And that's our plan. That's our plan. How can we change that behavior to really bring these people, help these people to lead and work in the digital and data world? So we have three working dimensions. The first one is about increasing at an individual level, the data literacy to build these data capabilities. That means not only basic understanding in programming in R or Python or in artificial intelligence, it's really about make, giving them also an understanding on how does the digital business model works the role of data in a digital business model, et cetera. So quite a broad yeah, range to validate 
and to see where we can increase our literacy. The second working dimension is the collaboration piece. As you have saw, the group makes the difference. So it's all about scaling these behaviors across the organization. And the third part is how can we look to the external and bring external innovation in. And also together with Bristol, we are working on several dimensions in that sense. But let me guide you through. Um, it's about that clarity that these working dimensions need structured and a systematic approach in our programs so we can really bring the right things to the people. And how did we, what programs did we launch in order to speak a common language when it's about data? We created a global digital and data academy where we really bring the holistic learning portfolio and learning journeys in. But really important is, do we speak the same language? So it's, it's really like French and English or German and English. Do we speak the same language? Do we understand the same thing, what we are saying? That's why we created the program around Data 101 to have a streamlined vocabulary when we talk about some key terms around the digital and data world. I will come to the culture collaboration piece because it's really an organizational topic where we need to ask, how do we need to collaborate and work together in order to sustain and enable a digital business to flourish? But we also need to create this awareness and to scale into broader groups for everyone where we launched the data bytes, where we talk about cutting edge talk, uh, topics in as part of an event series internally to Roche. When you look externally, you may have seen already posts from one from time to time around healthcare explorers. It's about data challenges that are posted through this external Roche website where any student can apply for and then help us to solve real business challenges that are posted through the business. But currently with Bristol, we are also building up some strong um, academic collaborations and looking into that in the next weeks. Next to that, we also look in the collaboration with startups. So you can see we have quite a large set of programs and work in this working dimension to make it work. The next question we asked ourselves to build this, this approach in a robust way, what do we want to have as a content? It was very clear that we need to pick up on the most important contents you saw in the journey, digitalization, digital foundation digital ecosystem. And you can see here, where do we expect everyone to have a minimum of knowledge? These are our clusters, we call them, our learning clusters. And it's really about building robust foundations, talking about an understanding automation and IoT. So the whole industry 4.0 or 5.0 technologies. It's about AI, data science, obviously, clearly, as a center, as the heart of what we want to achieve. But it's also about immersive collaboration opportunities through the metaverse. Next to that, we need to understand other topics like how does it work to make data supported decision making? How does it contradict um, to our human decision making? Or does it go hand in hand? What is the human bias versus the machine bias? Talking about these topics. And it's about digital business modeling, the role of opportunities and due to the characteristics of data, how do they work? How do they differ from our traditional business models? We talk about digital ecosystems as a whole and also which is getting one of the most important topics and Chiara also mentioned it in the introduction. It's about ethics. Ethics, when we talk about data access, and availability and ethics when it comes to the topic of algorithms. And probably you had already a lot around ChatGPT and these large language models, which is in everyone's mouth. So more than ever, the ethical questions are to be discussed now. If you look then into that program to give you an overview, how we try to follow up on that, we have deep dive sessions for every foundation and we go through them so we can grow the knowledge across the organization and really scale 
behaviors in the end. But let me come back to the topic of the group makes the difference. This is really important. How can we better scale? You saw literacy is more about individuals being increasing their level of understanding and literacy. But what about the organizational aspect when we talk about culture? How can we scale and work in communities together? And there's just an idea. So that's our first thinking. And here we want to do further research and thinking around that. How can we measure that? And how can we scale these behaviors? So these are slides now where we really start thinking. How can we engage better? How can we make data culture converted from this fuzzy, not tangible, non-measurable thing into how can we measure change? And how can we measure behavior? So the ideas are around that. What if each of these layer represents a community that is not anymore guided by the organizational hierarchy, but really by purpose? So if we think about building a digital backbone, who are the people doing that? It's, it doesn't matter if they are sitting in IT, if they are sitting in the business, if they are sitting in the product teams, it doesn't matter. There are huge duplications we also have in the company. But what if we could bring them together as a community to work with one purpose and that for each layer? How can we create these communities and how can we create this sense of purpose? So we can grow knowledge on data and digital. And this will also help us to close this gap. As said, if I continue to have a mindset of a candle, I probably built everything for the candle. And we need to consider this as a system that has strong dependencies and limitations between each other. And it's about us humans to collaborate or to co-create um, to make that happen. What could be the purpose of each of these layers? So here, the first purpose where we want to bring people together could be that it's about co-creating and building adaptive digital and data infrastructures as the foundation for scale for a flourishing healthcare ecosystem. It requires really, really long-term thinking as well. On the second layer, what is so important about these insights business we want to have what is so important there it's really about anticipating our patients future needs or even human future needs putting ourselves in the shoe of the patient and asking decision what they need to make based on data and what decisions they want to and need to make based on data and information and it's a lot about adoption about co-creation it's not anymore that we as companies can go and say that's the product, take it. If we think about data, it's about co-creation, in particular with patients. There are two mantras I have in mind around that layer. Data is co-created by nature, and data is the fabric of ecosystems. And that's so true for us, because building an insights business means that companies like Roche need patient data in order to create a product. And that's per se, by nature, co-create. It's not that we as company own this data. It's part of every one of us, of individuals. And that's something we need to understand and learn as a company, which is super important because you don't go anymore with this, with this way where you say, I sell you something. It's about co-creation. And there's a big difference. The third layer. And you may all struggle with that. And even if you look into company, it's about building this access, this data operational excellence. And to, the purpose could be to ensure that data is accessible and made available for use in a secure, but also simplified way. Within Roche, this is for our perspective, but also, and that's very important, within the healthcare ecosystem, data is co-created by nature. This needs to be the key mantra at that layer. And on level four, it's really about the insights. We need to co-create this new value. We need to understand what patients need. And the purpose is it's built on people's needs. It's not anymore because we say, hey, that's a good scientific test. 
needs to fit to the people needs. It needs to be used. It needs to be adopted and need their value. And as you know, and probably you all do some games, whatever it is. And if you don't do gaming, you even have your Netflix account. What has this to do? Just coming back. If we say it's about communities, you always as humans want to engage in a community through something. You, all of you probably have at least a picture you selected on Netflix or whatever provider for videos and gamings you have, a picture that represents you in this virtual setting, right? In this co-creation setting and building that community. At least I do. And that's how we try to engage in this common purpose on what we start thinking. Wouldn't it be easier to engage in certain communities through types of kind of avatars? And you can see here some uh, one example how we could imagine this character um, to be described like really with a core, core purpose. And it's not a job description. It's really about this core purpose. It goes beyond hierarchy. It goes across the organization, but at the same time to, and to share where this character can collaborate with the right layers together. And that's how we try to embark our journey towards a robust data culture or to create that what you see saw in the video. It's about shared behaviors in the context of data and analytics. And with that, I'm closing some key, with some key takeaways. Remember, digital transformation is the foundation for a data-driven activities and business. Without digital transformation, no data-driven business. A digital business requires new business model compared to the traditional one. Data becomes a factor of production. Data and analytics become a production factor in that. Data culture is the scaled and shared and expressed version of our behaviors in the context of data and analytics. It's an individual, remember, can be data literate, but it only has an impact if it's shared, if the group acts accordingly. A data culture connects concept intentionally tries to create new patterns of activity through our working dimension, through the programs, through the clusters, we try to bring this intention in with the clear intention to increase our maturity in this journey. And the data culture fosters the achievement of business outcome through communities and collaboration. And that's probably the least experience we are currently where you saw our first ideas to move into that direction. It's about a new way of collaborating. And while we know that, and we heard probably agile ways of working, agile methodologies and so on. It's still about how do we do co-creation? How do it does it really work? And last but not least, a data culture concept promotes a mindset of openness. And probably while I was speaking, you were listening to your little voice and you were saying, ah, oh, what she's talking about, this is crazy. Oh no, I don't agree, I agree or whatever. This is all in our minds and that's our, immature little voices in our heads. We all have them and they are always present. But this cultural concept needs to promote this mindset of openness, which is super important. Innovation and sharing to shape the digital ecosystem. And with that, thanks to all of you for now. And I am happy to take your questions. Thank you, Nadia, for that fantastic presentation. There's so much to think about and to take in. Um, I particularly like your um, saying of data is co-created by nature. And I definitely had that internal dialogue, um, you know, in my head while you were speaking. So thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any burning questions immediately? Um, we only have about three minutes left, so I will take any questions from um, the audience if anyone has any. Otherwise, I would like to ask you, you mentioned, um, you know, creating the culture where you go beyond a pe people's opinions. 
um, and how it's important that everyone gets on board with the business model and understands that journey, but also being able to scale up behaviours as part of those cultures. Do you have any examples of how this has, has happened with Roche or, or any of your other projects? It's, um, it's really still a journey, what I can see. And I have a lot of conversations with our also our commercial affiliates. And more and more I hear there that we are looped in from the data and analytics function, we are still kind of a function to say, I need to let the sales pitch out of uh, conversation for now. And some small co-creation workshops really start. So really with customers, with clinicians and so on. So it's, it doesn't work anymore only with the sales pitch to sell our product. It's really about that. And this is quite promising. And that's where we can see it, it starts a sensibilization and awareness starts to grow that something needs to happen differently to come along with the topic on data is co-created by nature. However, we also still have a very long journey to go. It's really, it starts to emerge. And um, it's also because maybe healthcare is so much regulated. There's so much about privacy that we really need to figure out a good balance between protecting the individual versus doing really good sustainable science in the end and have that access to data. And that's the reason where I see at Roche, even at global level, independent where we are, we, there is a data ethics or AI ethics forum um, that started to work with a position paper across Roche to under talk about and discuss these ethical questions that bring us um, to the foundations of decision making and to be able to go far beyond in a in a robust manner. Absolutely. Yes, data ethics is really important to integrate into these discussions and these plans on, on many different levels. But um, thank you so much um, for your offering. And there's a lot to take away. It's been really interesting. And please do complete our feedback form for those in the audience so we can take your comments and thoughts on board and join us for our next session coming up at 12 p.m. with uh, BT. And uh, um, Nadja, you mentioned data ethics. We have a special edition of our data ethics club um, coming up this afternoon. So do join that session, followed by the beauty and data of value um, and value of a data uh, visualization session so please join us for that but once again thank you Nadia we really enjoyed it great presentation and we'll speak to you all soon take care everyone take care